How's it going, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Couch GM's podcast. It is Tuesday, December 13th, and this show may look different and sound different as the boys have left me hanging. I am your host, Cody Roadcap, and it will just be me tonight. So what are we going to cover? We're going to talk some NFL news and notes. We're going to hit George's favorite segment, despite him not being here, quotes of the week. Follow that up with a week 15 waiver wire preview the Thursday night game. That's what we have on the docket for today. As always, you can find us at thecouchgms.com on our social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, at the Couch GMs, and join us on our Discord. The link is in the description. It's in our Instagram bio. Make sure you join us there to talk fantasy football all the time. But right now, let's jump into NFL news. And kicking off the NFL news first, I have to say all our fantasy players out there that made the fantasy playoffs, uh, this should be your first week unless you're on bye. Congrats. Congrats for making the playoffs. And if you didn't, uh, still keep playing. Keep being competitive. Make your league fun. Play spoiler. Win the consolation bracket. Whatever it may be, uh, make sure you keep battling out all fantasy season. But this week, there's no college football, which means the NFL has jumped right in. And we have three games on Saturday. So you have a Thursday night matchup, then you have three games on Saturday. So we have football all weekend, but you need to be prepared and get your lineup set. We have the Colts at the Vikings this week, Ravens at the Browns, and the Dolphins at the Bills. So those are the six teams that will be playing on Saturday. So again, make sure you're checking your lineups, not playing anybody on Saturday or Thursday in your flex. Make it difficult on Saturday, depending on how many Vikings and Bills and Browns and Ravens you have. Uh, but try to avoid playing players it, that don't play on Sunday or Monday in your flex spot just to give you a little bit of an advantage. We have some free agent news. Uh, a former wide receiver that wears number 13 has signed in Dallas. Not the guy you were probably thinking of OBJ, but T.Y. Hilton, former Colts wide receiver, has joined the Dallas Cowboys. Does this mean they're out on Odell Beckham? Could be. Uh, I know there's been some reports around OBJ that he might not have been ready until the playoffs. He was just looking to, you know, join a team to get acclimated and then be ready for the playoff run, maybe late uh, regular season, but he didn't fully understand the point of that. Uh, so it seems the Cowboys have gone in a different direction and are signing T.Y. Hilton. That doesn't mean you're going to rush out on your waiver wire and pick up T.Y. Hilton by any means. Uh, he didn't look like his former self when his last couple of years in Indy. Uh, he'll be a nice complimentary piece, but you weren't starting Noah Brown, who was a part of that offense. Uh, you debated each week if you even wanted to play Michael Gallup. So I don't see, think there's any reason for you to go out there and add T.Y. Hilton, barring some major injuries. So at least you know he's on the Cowboys. He's back in, back into football, and maybe we'll see him make a play or two, catch a, a deep ball uh, for old time six. Uh, in the upcoming weeks staying in nfc east uh, i did have to throw this one on here this has nothing to do with fantasy football but since tyler and george both are not here this week i did have to talk a little eagles titans the eagles are signing former titans punter brett Kern. now if you miss the ended up not really turning out to anything but uh the eagles punter got hurt on sunday after attempting to dodge a block and pick up a ball and run for a first down uh it play looked great it didn't really count but he unfortunately did get hurt uh so the eagles they're they're adding more talent and they're getting you know a top punter uh you know it was a big deal when brett kern left the titans so the eagles get another solid veteran and the eagles also brought in former safety anthony harris uh so it really feels like eagles are all in on this championship run which also means I have to congratulate the Philadelphia Eagles on clinching the first playoff spot of the 2022 NFL season. Congrats to them. I know George is excited about that. Um, I'm sure he wishes he was here to be able to rub it in our faces on how his team is the best in the league. But we'll have to wait for that on Thursday. And just like waiting on for Thursday, there was a bunch of injuries that happened, some big names, some uh you know, smaller guys that are still important to fantasy football. And we just don't have enough information out here. So I don't want to spend too much time speculating. Um, You know, we saw Debo Samuel, the, the severity of that one, uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. 
Uh, Russell Wilson, he left with a concussion. Brock Purdy might be a little banged up. Uh, we saw some other guys leave some injury, but we'll have all that uh, injury update for you on our show later this week. Um, so make sure you check that out. That'll be out Friday morning as we go all over the week 15 matchups. Um, but until then, let's jump into quotes. Of the week. And kicking off quotes of the week, I have two quotes for you this week. Um, the first one was a part of a whole like minute and a half about conversation between uh, mainly between the 49ers linebacker, Dre Greenlaw and Tampa Buccaneers quarterback, Tom Brady. Uh, the quote I picked out of this video was I've been watching you since I was two, uh, which is great. You know, just like, holy cow, like that's how long Tom Brady has been in. Maybe there was a little bit. I didn't do the math before putting the quote in here. If he was actually watching him since he was two, if that's how old Tom Brady is compared to Drake Greenlaw. Uh, but what I really liked about this, and I, and I retweeted the video on the Couch GM's Twitter, so make sure you check it out. But it was just a, a wholesome exchange. Dre Greenlaw got an interception off of Tom Brady and kept the ball because he has so much respect for him, called him the greatest ever. Uh, Fred Warner, all pro linebacker, got into it. And, you know, he meant, he said, you know, it was an honor to play against him because, you know, he has that much respect in the league. And Dre Greenlaw brought the ball to him and said, can you, can you sign this ball? And Tom Brady, which we've seen, you know, have issues walking off the field before, you know, not wanting to shake hands. He, he has all that, but you know, he took, he appreciated the, the gesture. He appreciated the kind words and he took time to sign the football. So one, uh, that was great to see from Tom Brady Two, It's also fun to see NFL players who get to do this for a living. And there's a lot of, you know, couch GMs everywhere that, you know, probably are a little bit envious of, you know, getting to see these guys each and every week, but to still see a little bit of fanboy come out, uh, from Dre Greenlaw, like, I just intercepted Tom Brady. How cool is that? Like, and taking the ball to him and getting his signature. Um, so that was just a cool moment. I definitely recommend checking out our video on Twitter or not our video, but the video we shared on Twitter. Uh, but speaking of Twitter, Garrett Wilson, Jets wide receiver. Uh, you know, he's had really a really strong rookie season, especially when it's a quarterback not named Zach Wilson out there. Um, and if you were watching the Bills Jets game uh, early in the first half, there was a play where Garrett Wilson caught an out route. Uh, he took about a step, maybe a step and a half outside, and got popped or out out of bounds. He was doing an out route to carry him out of bounds, and he got hit late. Uh, and it was pretty blatant. Uh, I know I was actually with Tyler and George. We were having a Christmas party, and we had red zone on. That that play happened to be on, and I was like, I can't believe they didn't call a flag. Well, Garrett Wilson couldn't believe they didn't call a flag either, either, and he even went to Twitter. He took to Twitter um, and had a quote in there that said, a ref told him, this ain't O State no more, referencing Ohio State, the college that Garrett Wilson went to. Uh, he said he hadn't got a call all season. Um, very interesting. You know, we've, we've heard the, the rumors, you know, I think Cam Newton a couple years ago was, you know, back when he was a younger player in the league, we heard them say, uh, you're too young to get that call, referencing pass or roughing the passer. Uh, so it seems like it might not just be court, you know, older quarterbacks. It might seem like these younger wide receivers uh, don't get called to the same level. And the only thing that is frustrating about that is like your placement in the league, your your status per se in the league shouldn't really affect how the game is being called. You know, the NFL is so much, you know, trying to protect the integrity and then you have refs apparently like obviously this is i'm taking garrett wilson's word that he put on twitter and i'll be honest you shouldn't believe everything you say read on the internet but i'm going to trust garrett wilson on this and refs shouldn't be saying this to players like they have to call the game fair you know some things are you know, bang bang roughing the passer uh can be a very questionable call at times uh, sometimes it oftentimes it goes in favor of the quarterback. Uh, but you know, when a player is getting hit out of bounds, I think that is, uh, you know, a little bit easier to call, you know, obviously replay does wonders. It does hurt it in a sense that everything looks, uh, easier to tell when it's slowed down. 
Uh, but And I don't want them to start, like, reviewing penalties and stuff like that. I just wish we took away the nonsense of, you know, you have to achieve a certain status, you know, to get calls to go your way. That's not how the game should be played or officiated. Um, and I appreciate Garrett Wilson taking to Twitter to raise his concerns. Interesting to see how the league responds if he gets a fine for speaking out against the officials. We've seen that happen in the past. Uh, but that will wrap up quotes of the week this week. Um, obviously, this is George's favorite segment, so I know he missed it. But what you guys really want to know is the week 15 waiver wire. All right, and kicking off week 15, again, I just want to say congratulations. If you are in a playoff matchup, if you made the playoffs, it is not easy. Um, I have one game I'm waiting on a DeAndre Hopkins versus James Conner on the Monday night game as we're recording this uh, about 10 minutes before kickoff. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out if I make the playoffs in one of the leagues. But if you, by now, you know, and if you're in, congratulations. And you got to figure it out. The good news is there's no bye weeks. Bye weeks are done. We get to, you know, have each map, each team play the rest of the way in the regular season. Um, and then also, pro tip, if this isn't the first week of your playoffs and you go all the way to week 18, talk to your commissioner, find a new league. You don't need to play in week 18 when, you know, potentially Patrick Mahomes isn't playing or Jalen Hurts isn't playing because they've already locked up the first round bye. Uh, so make sure you get into a league that this is the first week of the fantasy playoffs and some guys you might need to add or look to pick up. Um, George has a great article over on the couchgms.com. I definitely recommend you checking that out, seeing who he put, reading the descriptions of why he put, but I will cover quickly on some of the guys that he mentioned. Um, first off, uh, a lot of the first group of guys, they are over 50% owned, some higher, uh, but it is definitely worth checking out if they are on your waiver wire, if they got cut for by Mageddon and you can pick them up this week. Um, Baltimore running back J.K. Dobbins, he did come back this week. He got a touchdown. Um, he didn't look to be 100%, but he played really well, and that's doesn't matter how you look as long as you're putting up points. So he did that. Um, we still don't know the status of Lamar Jackson, uh, Tyler Huntley. He also got a little banged up in that game. So we'll have more on that uh, on a later show. But J.K. Dobbins, check if he's out there. He's just under 60% owned, according to NFL.com. KC running back. This is George's favorite guy. He puts him on every week. Isaiah Pacheco. And I think it's worth noting that he has come on strong. He has been the guy. I know Jarek McKinnon did steal some thunder this week with some big touchdown plays. Uh, but Isaiah Pacheco seems to be the guy getting carries, getting the attempts in the run game. 73% owned, so a lot less leagues, but double check that he's out there. The Rams, Cam Akers, running back. Seems like he's finally got a hold on that job now that Daryl Henderson has now been cut from the Rams, and he was waived over the weekend from the Jaguars as he's a now pending free agent. Uh, but Cam Akers, 63% uh, owned. But he has a phenomenal matchup against the Green Bay Packers, who have given up a lot of points to fantasy running backs this year. We're just, you know, they had a bye week this past week, so you might have forgot about them. Uh, but, you know, that's two weeks removed from giving up over 350 rushing yards to the Philadelphia Eagles. So Cam Akers could be in play for a spot start this week if he is available 63.7% owned. Now, another running back that has been getting more involved, especially as Leonard Fournette has been a little banged up, is Bay running back Rashad White, 65% owned. The Buccaneers offense is struggling, uh, but this guy still deserves to be rostered um, and can start for you in a pinch. So double check your your waiver wire and see if he is out there. Mr. Hat Trick, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, Jerry Judy. He caught three touchdowns this week. He's had a really up and down season, and mostly the down has been due to injury. He hasn't been able to play. But when he's been on the field, he's been productive. And we saw it again on Sunday, whether it was Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson then left. It was Brett Rippon. He caught three touchdowns. Now, he is the highest of the guys to make sure you check uh, at 78.7%. But that means, to our listeners out there, there is twenty over 20% of leagues that he is available. Uh, and if he is available, 
go pick him up. It makes sense. He he puts up points when he's out there, and he, hopefully he has got over the injury bug for this season. And then the last guy on Georgia's list to make sure you want to check out if they're already owned at 58.4% is rookie wide receiver George Pickens. We talked about him a lot on last week's show, uh, a fringe flex guy. Some weeks he has a lot of targets and catches. Some weeks he disappears. Uh, but he is he's seeming to become the number one target for Kenny Pickett. The Pickett to Pickens thing we heard off offseason is becoming real. So at 58.4%, if he's out there, he should probably be ahead of most of these guys on the rest of our list. Um, need a quarterback this week. Uh, Brock Purdy, he gets to play Seattle on a short week, but he has looked really good. Now he is dealing with an oblique injury. Um, so that could be something that could be concerning uh, and it would be tough to know. But the good thing about Brock Purdy is, is you'll know Thursday if he's going to play. And if you're in a pinch against the Seattle Seahawks who have given up some points and he's a full go, I think he's a, a possible flex option. Uh, not a flex, but a possible option for a stream quarterback candidate. He's under 5% owned. He had three touchdown passes uh, this past Sunday. And maybe you don't want him for this week because it's the Seattle and it's on a short week. Then he gets the Washington Commanders the following week on 10 days rest. He should be healthy by then. So Brock Purdy is a good waiver wire article. Um, and we're going to talk about this a little bit too is, you know, you're in the fantasy playoffs right now. We're not worried about buys as much. So depth is a lot more important. Um, but it could also be you can cut some of the lower end pieces on your roster and get ahead to, you know, week 16, week 17. Like, especially when we're talking defenses, tight end, you know, if there's a really good quarterback that you want to talk about, for instance, Jared Goff, he's not on George's list. He's on a guy I wanted to mention. He is 47% owned, so he's very close to that threshold. Now he does have to play the New York Jets, who are a top 10 team against quarterbacks. Um, I still think it's a solid play this week for Jared Goff. He's had over 20 points in the last two weeks, 17-plus points the week prior versus the Bills, and the Lions are 5-1 and one in their last six games. The Lions are balling out right now, and a, a big part of that is the way Jared Goff is playing. So I think, you know, the Bills technically are a better defense in terms of fantasy quarterbacks. He still put up 17 points. You could play him this week. But maybe you're scared of that Jets secondary because they're elite and you're worried about this game coming off a big divisional matchup. Maybe they, you know, have a little fall off and kind of don't play up to their potential. He gets Carolina. I know Carolina had the big win against uh, Seattle this past week, but he gets Carolina in week 16. So that's another good matchup. So that's what I'm saying. You can you can work ahead uh, now that we don't have to worry about buys. It's you're kind of looking at buy like how you would play for buys. All right, which guy would have a good matchup when my top player has a buy? Well, now when you're looking at the quarterbacks, the tight ends, the defenses, those top streaming options or top streaming positions, I should say. Okay, Jared Goff. He has the Jets. It's a tough matchup. Then he has the Panthers and the Bears. Those are solid matchups to round out the, the fantasy playoffs. So uh, look at Jared Goff as more than just a this week guy. But back to George's list, I do want to hit on the guy that I was not expecting to have another good week, especially in a tough matchup against the Bills. But that is New York Jets rookie running back Zonovan Bam Knight. Now he's 40% owned already. He is picking up steam. But that is now his third straight 10 point, 10 plus point performance. Um, but Michael Carter also fumbled when he was in there. So Michael Carter was back, and Bam has seemed to be the top guy. And, you know, th this goes back to this past offseason. We saw Michael Carter had a really good season last year, and they still thought that he needed a counterpart, and they brought in Brees Hall. And there was weeks that both Michael Carter and both Brees Hall were productive together, and then Brees Hall started to carry away. Now, I'm not saying Z Zonovan or Bam is on the same level as Brees Hall. He wasn't a second-round pick like Knight was. But he is, you know, stepped into that Brees Hall role, per se, and he is getting the opportunities, and he's making the most of it. Uh, so I really like adding Bam Knight if he's available. I have him in a couple leagues that I'm already in. 
Uh, but at 40% owned, that's 60% of the leagues that he is, you know, still available. And the Jets, I just talked about with Jared Goff, they get the Lions and that defense. So it should be a great week for Bam Knight. Uh, if you need to chase some points or you think if you're not, haven't been on the Isaiah Pacheco game, another running back, Jarek McKinnon, he had, you know, a couple big plays. He scored some points. Uh, but the reason he's on this list is the Seattle Seahawks are currently ranked 31st against fantasy running backs. So if you think you can catch lightning in a bottle, uh, Jarek McKinnon is a solid waiver wire option. Um, this is not a long-term play like I've been talking about. This is more of like if you need a guy this week, if you have an injury concern, maybe you have a Kenneth Walker and he might not go on Thursday. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And so now you're panicking and trying to pivot to a running back. Jarek McKinnon might be that guy. Uh, moving on to some wide receivers. Uh, George, again, has Donovan Peoples-Jones on his his list. I'm not going to, for me personally, I'm still concerned about how bad the offense has looked with Deshaun Watson. Like I joked around this past weekend with Tyler and George, like when do they bench him to go back to Jacoby Brissett to save a season? And honestly, at the way Watson has played, I think the Browns have one touchdown uh, on offense over the last two games uh, with Deshaun Watson under center. Uh, now Peoples Jones, he did see 12 targets, caught eight balls. So that's, you know, that is high volume. So that's why you would consider it. And you have to think eventually Deshaun Watson turns it around. They get it going. There's still Amari Cooper there. Um, so he'll never be the true number one. They'll go back and forth a little bit. Uh, but I, I could see, you know, if you're in a pinch and the Browns, they do have the Ravens this week. You have given up a decent amount of points through the past. Donovan Peoples-Jones, 37.6% owned. Not a bad option out there if you need it. This one, when I saw it on George's list, I had... I was I was shocked because I had to I had to really look into this one. Um, that is wide receiver Isaiah Hodgins. Now, if you are listening to this podcast and you just went who, I don't blame you because I had to do the same thing when I was checking out George's article. Now he is a Giants wide receiver, and if you've listened to the show or just watch football, you know the Giants have not had a solid wide receiver all season. They've been banged up. Uh, but Isaiah Hodgins, he has now caught a touchdown in back-to-back -back games. So that is something to, you know, worth watching. He seems to be a guy that's getting momentum. He's healthy. So Isaiah Hodgins, uh, less than 0.1% owned. So maybe this is a guy you don't need anybody this week, and you want to take a flyer um, and see if this continues, if this is, you know, a fluke. And you just want to, you know, pick up a guy. You don't need, you know, that backup quarterback. You have a Jalen Hurts or a Patrick Mahomes. You're good. Take a flyer on Isaiah Hodges. You might end up getting a solid piece down the stretch. Um, just look a year ago. You know, Rashad Penny came out of nowhere to win you the fantasy playoffs. Amra St. Brown, very similar situation. Um, he had, you know, a couple plays throughout the regular season, really came on the last couple of weeks and became a fantasy champion. Now, I'm not saying Isaiah Hodgins is going to do the same thing, but he's a guy you've seen now touchdowns in back-to-back -back weeks, probably worth the flyer at this point in the season as a guy that you can keep on, on your bench. Um, then we do have to talk some tight ends. Last guy on George's list is tight end. Uh, I used to know this back in the draft process, but it's for the Tennessee Titans. Ch 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 Chigosium Okonkwo. I believe is the correct name. Everyone calls him Chig, and that's just the perfect name for him because it's a lot easier to say. Now, Chig, the problem with Chig is he doesn't get the targets, but honestly, which tight end does? He always seems to make a play or two each week. Uh, whether it ends up in the end zone, that's the question mark. He got in the end zone against Jacksonville uh, this week, 1.2% owned. We hope to see more and more of this, especially, you know, the Titans are dealing with a lot of injuries at wide receiver. Traylon Burks missed a game with a concussion. We hope he's back this week. They were starting Nick Westbrook, Akini, uh, Racy McMath, and some other guys. Uh, Cody Board, I believe, was the other one. Uh, so not a lot of great pass. Robert Woods, that that's the, the main guy there. But not a lot of great pass catching options. And this rookie tight end has made some splash plays. So again, maybe not a guy you start this week. Sometimes it's tough to hold two tight ends. But the Tennessee Titans you know, do have a, they not the best matchup this week as they're set to face. 
the Los Angeles Chargers, but the Chargers, um, they have gotten better on defense, but they have been able to give up some points. And they might have to score points to keep into this game. So Chig isn't a bad option. Uh, and But speaking of scoring points, at the tight end position, 15 targets to someone not named Travis Kelsey. Have we seen that at all this season? And it was probably by a guy you didn't expect. That's Evan Ingram, 42% owned. He saw 15 targets, had 11 catches, had a touchdown last week. Can we expect 15 targets each week? No, we cannot expect 15 targets from Evan Ingram each week. But that is volume that we have been yearning for, longing for, really trying to find in the tight end market. Now, there is some potential guys like Dallas Goddard might be coming back from injury this week. So maybe you have him on your team and you're not searching for a tight end. Uh, but honestly, unless you have Travis Kelsey, like everyone else has been disappointed. So Evan Ingram, the, the Jags looked good this week. The Jags have been playing very well. Evan Ingram is approaching that, like, you just got to put him out there because he sees opportunity, yet he's 42% owned. So why don't you go pick him up? And then I want to give you two defenses because we like to give you two defenses each week, or at least to give you a defense. One is the Cardinals defense, 23% owned. They get Denver next week. Now, yes, they did have a comeback against the Chiefs. It didn't quite finish into a victory. Uh, and most of it was led by Brett Rippon. So maybe you like this less or more if, you know, Russ plays or doesn't play. But like I mentioned, Russ is in concussion protocol. We'll see how he progresses throughout the week. Uh, but the Cardinals against an already bad Denver's offense, now getting a potential backup quarterback, seems like a solid stream option if you're looking for a streaming defense this week. And to wrap up this segment as some waiver wires or some of our favorite waiver wires, um, like I mentioned, sometimes it's important to look ahead because you, you already have the guys you're going to start. You made the playoffs. You know which guys you're going to play. The Titans DST. Yes, they just had a rough game against Jacksonville. That's divisional. We talk about all the time. Divisional games are crazy. They get the Chargers this week. Chargers look really good on Sunday night. You're probably not going to play them. But they're only 35% owned. And they have the Houston Texans in week 16. The Houston Texans haven't been able to stop Derrick Henry since Derrick Henry entered the league. He's had like three of his last four games, if not three straight 200-yard rushing games against them. The, the, the Houston Texans won't be able to put up a ton of points. So that's like a kind of matchup that is perfect to look ahead. You know, whether, you know, if you have a bye this week and waivers aren't as important because you're you know, if you're chilling at home, just watching football and enjoying it for the fun of it. Or, you know, if you like your matchup or you really want to, uh, you know, get ahead of your opponents, go ahead and pick up the Titans defense for their week 16 matchup. Uh, it's always, t you know, it's hard to look ahead, especially in the fantasy playoffs. You're worried about being in the moment, in the now. Uh, remember, I will give this PSA. Fantasy football is about having fun. Uh, I talk about this all the time, especially with Tyler and George, who were in multiple leagues. Uh, I'm in six, George is in eight, Tyler's in 10. I think that's how many leagues we're playing in this year. And we talk about the balance that comes with fantasy football and making sure we're still enjoying football because we love football. We love playing fantasy football. All of us want to win, uh, but we have to have fun doing it. So uh, live in the moment. Enjoy it. Take it in. Don't feel like you can't look ahead. Uh, and pick up guys for week 16 because you have to win the moment. At the end of the day, we can't control what happens. We can give you all the analytics in the world. We can give you all our gut, in, 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 our gut, in, I can't even say the word, inclinations. There we go. I finally got it out. Uh, all our inclinations that we think that we might have, all the guys that we like this week. But at the end of the day, the NFL players don't care about our fantasy leagues. We can't control what actually happens. So you can 100% look ahead it's not like you're actually playing the game and have to take each opponent one by one uh the best fantasy the best chance to win is to get an edge up on your opponent and looking ahead is a great way to do that as always you can reach out to us on any of our social media platforms or hit us up in the discord chat link in the description below uh and ask the waiver wire questions maybe you're curious on how much fab you should spend we're in the playoffs Spend your fab dollars. It's not like you get, it doesn't carry over to next year. Uh, so 
why would you end the season with $85? Go out and get one of these guys that might help you win a fantasy championship. But before I wrap up the show, let's jump into our Thursday night free. And this Thursday night, we have a divisional matchup. And this could be a very uh, big game as the Seattle Seahawks are coming off a tough loss to the Carolina Panthers. And they're hosting division rival San Francisco 49ers, who are banged up. Uh, we saw, or I mentioned, Brock Purdy. He is day-to-day with an oblique injury. We're hoping he can go uh, this week um, for sure. We're hoping Brock Purdy can go. The big news coming out of this, though, is Debo Samuel. Now, if you were watching that game live, like I've mentioned a few times in this episode, I was with Tyler and George. We watched that play, and we thought Debo Samuel was done for the year. And we thought, not the 49ers, another tough blow for them. They got some good news. They believe it's just an uh, MCL sprain. He avoided the high ankle sprain. Uh, He's not going to play this week. Unfortunately, he might not play the rest of the fantasy playoffs. That is the tough part about injuries at this moment. Multiple week injuries at this point pretty much take him out of the fantasy playoffs. But don't hear what I'm not saying. You're going to hold on to Debo Sam. You're not going to cut him. Uh, maybe he does play in two weeks in your fantasy championship. The last thing you want to do is be in your championship game and then have to go up against Debo Samuel because you cut him thinking he was done for the season. He's not done for the season. Uh, they're expecting him back in the regular season. So that is good news, but that does not help you this week. The other injury news. Uh, Seattle Seahawks running back Kenneth Walker, very good running back, you know, been solid after he came back from injury, didn't play last week. Uh, there was no official practice this week for the, or on Monday by the time we're recording this. It was a guesstimation, uh, but their estimation of Kenneth Walker's status would be limited. So that's a good sign. You know, it wasn't a DNP. He would have been limited if there was a practice. Um, obviously by not having a practice, it's hard to really gauge. Um, the good thing is, is on Thursday and if Kenneth Walker goes, it's going to be a very tricky situation. And I, I would love if Tyler and George were here to break this down with me because the Seattle Seahawks have been really good with Kenneth Walker. He's been, you know, a top fantasy running back and I have a hard time saying bench Kenneth Walker, but I do have to give a shout out that the 49ers defense is elite. So, Kenneth Walker coming back from an injury might not be the best play. Um, For example, it might be better to take the flyer on waiver wire edition Zonovan Knight than Kenneth Walker. I know that is very tough, and it's very hard to make those bold moves, especially for a guy like Kenneth Walker, who probably carried you to a fantasy playoff. Um, So, unfortunately, his injury is very concerning, and it's not the best matchup this week but you might also be in the situation that you know there's just no one else there that you want to play and you have to roll with your guys and i talked about it last week sometimes it's best to go out swinging with your guys the guys that got you there than trying to get too cute and you know you know chasing the points of Jarek mckinnon or you know trying to you know catch fire with uh another running back or, you know, playing Kareem Hunt against the Ravens, you know, playing a backup like that, or, you know, chasing points with AJ Dillon this week against the Rams. Like you're probably going to run a roll with Kenneth Walker this week. Um, unless you have, you know, maybe you were fortunate enough and not have to deal with the injuries and he's been kind of your flex play uh, because you got him late because he was a rookie in your draft and you have some other options. Uh, so Kenneth Walker isn't a must start this week. Um, but he's a probable start as he has been a top fantasy running back option this season when he's been out on the field. And I said, divisional games get wild. We saw uh, the Broncos make a comeback, the Jags dominate the Titans. So this is divisional. It should be fun. Um, I don't know if it'll be as fun as last week. Shout out to Bl- uh, Baker Mayfield, his 36 hour uh, time with the Rams and led a comeback in the final uh you know, two minutes of the game. That was pretty impressive. Um, circling back to the Brock Purdy injury, I did just want to mention 
if Brock Purdy wouldn't go, the only current quarterback on the 49ers depth chart is long-term uh, journeyman backup Josh Johnson. Uh, so at least he does have NFL experience. He's been around for quite a few years, bounced around. I believe it's 15 teams now. So he's been around the league. Um, and I do think whether Purdy goes or Johnson goes does change your opinion. I do think Ayuk is in your lineup this week. Uh, especially with no Debo Samuel, I think Ayuk is safe to be in your lineup. But I don't think, uh, I don't actually know. I don't think I'm chasing, you know, a John, a John Jennings, or uh, that's not my name, um, a Ray Ma- Ray Ray McLeod, or a, a Juan Jawan Jennings. Jawan, that's how the proper pronunciation. I'm not chasing any of those guys with Debo out, despite the quarterback. Um, there and then speaking of wide receivers back to the seattle seahawks side i do have to talk about tyler lockett now he has six touchdowns in six straight games can he make it seven that'd be super impressive as he does if he does and you know he might not even need to have a touchdown to have a solid fantasy day uh he seems to be the number one target option for geno smith but that doesn't rule out dk metcalf so again this is a hard game to predict because it's Thursday night. You want to get off to a good start in terms of the fantasy matchup you have this week. Unfortunately, the 49ers defense is so good. Um, but I don't, I just don't see there in any situation where you bench Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf. It just doesn't seem possible. So just to recap, we're playing on the 49ers side. Uh, Brock Purdy is a deeper, you know, two quarterback league, you know, 16 team, 14 team, or just really desperate. And, you know, everybody's hogging a backup quarterback can either guy and he goes, I think you can play him. He's, he's looked really good. Uh, Geno Smith. Uh, I would probably bench Geno Smith this week. It's a guy that has been a lot on the start sit article, a guy that surprised. I know there's been some rumors that they're looking to seek, you know, an extension with him because he is a free agent, but I would not play him in fantasy this week. Running back wise, Christian McCaffrey is a no brainer. Daily fantasy, uh, you know, if you need a cheap option at running back, a Jordan Mason might not be a bad idea, as you know, he is. And when I say daily, daily fantasy, most of the time you're just playing Thursday night, so you probably won't throw him in there. Uh, but, you know, Debo Samuel took some steps at running back. Maybe they're going to turn that to Jordan Mason now and get him a couple more opportunities. So, not a bad option if you're into like a Thursday night. Uh, you know, DraftKings Magic, not a sponsor, but Jordan Mason, not in your regular lineup, but if you want to take a flyer in DFS, not a bad option. Kenneth Walker, probably too good to play if he goes. Uh, make sure you're checking out on Twitter, following along with us at the Couch Jams. We'll let you know if he's good to go come Thursday. Wide receiver wise, Brandon Ayuk for the 49ers, Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf for the Seattle Seahawks. George Kittle, he's still in your lineup despite his disappointment. You just, you're going to, take it with him and he's another guy that could see an increase of opportunities now that Debo Samuel won't be playing no tight end for the Seattle Seahawks not throwing out no no fan not chasing those points from two weeks ago as much as I love Will Disley I'm not throwing him in your lineup uh and that wraps it up you know you could probably still play the 49ers defense if you've been rolling with them all season I know the Seahawks have put up some points but they did not look the best on Sunday and they have a short week to turn it around. Um, so that'll wrap up the Thursday night preview. I hope you enjoyed uh, this unique episode where it was just myself. Uh, Tyler and George should be back uh, on our episode later this week when we go over all the week 15 matchups. So I definitely appreciate it. If you come back and join the three of us for that, um, let us know if you have any questions. Again, congrats on making your fantasy playoffs. And if you didn't make the fantasy playoffs, still go out there and have fun with fantasy football. It helps keep you engaged. Uh, it helps build the league camaraderie. It's no fun when everybody that loses uh, doesn't, you know, make the or keep the league competitive. With that said, one more quick PSA: If you're in a league and you miss the playoffs, um, I personally, you know, if you miss the playoffs, you either need to have your commissioner. Go in each week and reset the waiver wire order. So the sixth seed would have the top, fifth, fourth, three, two, one, and then uh, 10, 9, 8, 7. So it would be 
almost like backwards the playoff teams have the priority on the waiver wire or the easy thing to do is just to lock waiver wires for non-playoff teams um that way the guys that are in you know for a championship are getting the first crack i do like leaving it open so it keeps the constellation brat competitive uh and switching it so that is what we have done in our league of record and it seems to really work uh for us so that was the one change i would make uh, but if you have any other questions or you guys do any other rules that are different that you think are, the listeners or people want to know, feel free to reach out. I know Tyler's not here, but he'll say it because he says at the end of every episode, this podcast is more fun for us and more fun for you when you get it, when you get involved. He wouldn't have stumbled through it. That's his thing. I did. I apologize. Uh, but thanks again for listening. I'm Cody Roadcap, and we'll see you all next